Alright, in this video, we are going to be repairing a Vizio 26 inch flat screen TV uh, that is having power problems. Um, when you try to power up the unit, all you get on this one is a slight ticking sound, no display, uh, no power indications of any type other than a ticking sound. Um, so, first thing we need to do, of course, is remove the power and the uh, cable lines to it. Then the next thing we need to do, there's a, a large amount of screws around on the back. We have to remove all those to remove the back panel. So just remove all of the screws. skip forward here. Alright, now that we have all of the screws around the edge, center, and sides removed, just gently lift the back cover off the unit. Set that to the side. And this is the power supply board that we will be working with. Um, need to remove it. It's held in place with four screws on the corners. Now once you remove the four screws You'll need to remove the AC power input cable. It's a, there's a little squeeze connector on it that needs to be squeezed, then you can pull it up. The next one is going to be the power cable going to the CPU controller board. It just unplugs. And then the next one is going from the power supply to the backlight inverter. It's a small cable on the side. And again, it just unplugs straight out of the socket. More screw. Sorry, five screws. Okay. Here we have the power supply board. Um, several capacitors are very evidently bul bulging on this one. Um, so we'll take it over to the repair bench and replace the capacitors on the board and bring the TV back to life. All right, here we are at the bench. We're going to do that repair on that Vizio power supply board. Um, quite evident that several of the capacitors that are on the board are bulging. Um, that's a surefire way to tell, you know, which ones are failing is the, the bulging. But the problem is some manufacturers, when they fail, they don't really have a visible um, signs, no bulging, no electrolyte solution leaking, no anything, the capacitors just fail. So usually you can tell visibly, but not necessarily. Um, so let's get busy repairing that power supply board and see if we can get that TV back going. Um, to do the repair, or to do the, the board rebuild, of course you're going to need to have a soldering iron. Um, standard 40 watt will do that. Lead free solder. Um, you'll need some desolder wick. Um, it's going to help to have some wire snips and then of course you need the capacitor kit with the appropriate values to replace on the board. Um, you need to use low ESR capacitors which are equivalent series resistance. They also need, need to be rated for high ripple current and high temperature. Um, otherwise when you put them on the board they may work for a week or two uh, but they will quickly die and when they do they can damage other components on the board because they will fail a lot worse than what the ones that are on the board have failed. So you do want to make sure that you have the correct values of capacitors, uh, correct values and the correct uh, ratings on the capacitors. Um, so to re replace or repair the board, what we need to do, of course, first is remove the capacitors on the board. Uh, we'll do that with our solder wick and your soldering iron. 
the way you do that is you know, basically the solder wick is a copper um, stranded material with solder uh, flux in it and what you'll do is you put it on one of the legs of the capacitor that you want to remove and apply the soldering iron the uh, solder will be absorbed into the solder wick and then you go to the next leg and do the same thing and then once the solder gets fully absorbed into the solder wick then you should be able to remove the capacitor from the board and you'll have a nice clean um, hole to put the new capacitor legs back through. Uh, you may need to move the solder wick around um, to get the capacitor, you know, to get the legs free. Make sure that you do have all the solder removed and then we should just be able to wiggle the capacitor a little bit and pull it free from the board which we have here. Um, so we need to do that for the capacitors that are on the board. Um, there are multiple values of capacitors on the board. Um, as you're taking them off you can write down which value goes into which location and the locations will be um, written on the board. Each capacitor has a uh, capacitor location and then you can look at the, uh, the actual physical value of the capacitor to tell you which one goes back into that location. Uh, you can either write you down uh, as you're taking them off, write down a little list or you can refer back to our uh, repair guide on our site at www.ccl-la.com if you're not watching it on our site um, to see uh, which locations uh, and which values for the capacitors and where they're located. We're just going to go ahead and remove all of the capacitors at this time off the board. And then we'll go back and repopulate the board with the new capacitors. Um, you can do it that way or when you're doing it yourself um, you can you know, go through and, and remove one capacitor and as you remove that one replace it with the um, corresponding value and then move to the next one and so forth so you work your way through the capacitors um, some people prefer to do it one way, some people prefer to do it another neither one are better or worse it's just put whichever you'd prefer to do um, the other thing on some of these capacitors, if there's not enough solder on the capacitor leads, a lot of times it helps if you just take some of the new solder and melt it on the leads. That gives you more surface area when you come back uh, with the solder wick for the soldering iron to heat up and absorb back in. It is a little bit of a time-consuming thing to do the repair on these boards, but it is well worth it. If you take your TV to a repair shop, you're going to pay the guy behind the counter to do the same thing, um, and most repair shops are going to charge you, you know, a couple hundred dollars to do this repair, and you can do it yourself with the proper parts uh, for, you know, 20 bucks plus some time. So it's quite worthwhile to do it yourself. Some of these capacitors on this board are glued in with a hot melt glue, so once you remove the legs, or you know, you remove the solder to, to free the legs, uh, you may have to break the capacitor loose from the hot melt glue. Uh, it's not a big thing, that's what the little white goop is around some of the terminals and connections. Um, 
it's just a hot melt glue, so just wiggle the capacitor and, until it breaks free. Not a big problem on that. As your wick gets uh, full of solder, you may have to do like I just did there and remove part of the wick. You just use wire cutters to cut off the part that is full of solder so that we, that we can move to the next solder joints. solder on that one just to give the wick something to grab a hold of. These are the power capacitors, the larger ones on the board. And we also need to go through and desolder and remove the smaller capacitors. They are the circuit startup capacitors. The larger ones are the filter capacitors. Before we get to the small ones, I'm going to show you a couple of things about replacing the capacitors on the board. Um, if you notice on the locations where the capacitors come out, one side of the circle is shaded dark, one side is not. The dark shaded side is the negative terminal on the capacitor. And if you look at the capacitors themselves, one side of the capacitor has a gray stripe with a negative lead, a negative symbol on it. That's the negative lead. When you reinsert the capacitors onto the board, just make sure that the negative lead goes into the, the hole that's shaded, and then the positive lead, of course, go into the other one. When you insert them in, into the board, you just separate the leads on the back of the board just to hold them in so you can come back and solder them. And let's say you just you know populate the board capacitor by capacitor and then we can come back and solder them after it's over with after we replace all the capacitors so I'm going to replace the larger ones here and then we'll come back and get the smaller ones capacitors are usually going to be on the output stages of the power supply um, to filter the voltage and that's usually where the problems come in um, but it's best to replace all the capacitors while you're doing the job so that you don't have to come back into it in a month or so and replace the rest of them. Um, now that we have the large filter ones on the board I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the soldering on that. Um, Basically, you take your soldering iron, put it on the end, one of the legs, apply a small amount of solder till it flows smoothly. Um, when you remove the soldering iron, you need to look at the solder joint, make sure that it's nice and bright and shiny colored, shiny metallic. If it's kind of a dull color, you do need to remelt the solder and apply a little bit more to it. Uh, that's what's called a cold solder joint, and it is not a good electrical connection, so you need to redo it. 
a couple more joints here. Okay, now we have all of those done. Then you take your wire cutters and just snip off the remaining capacitor legs that are sticking through the board so that the connection is about like put the rest of them are on the board, just a little short connector. I have to make sure it's, you know, that they're all cut off flush like that so that they don't short out. Alright, that's the large capacitors. Now we'll just go through, like I say, and replace the smaller capacitors doing the same type procedure. Um, you'll have two between the heat sinks, one on the side, three towards the center of the board that will need to be replaced. Um, same procedure on those. Um, and then we can take it back over to the board, uh, to the monitor, and power it up and see how it works. All right, here we are back at the monitor. Um, we're going to reinstall the power supply that we just finished repairing um, and test the unit out and see how we did. We just need to set it in place. Make sure that you have all three connectors plugged back in firmly and securely. Next thing you need to make sure is that you put all four screws back into the power supply. It uses those to ground itself to the chassis and you do want to make sure that you do that so that you don't have the potential for electric shock. So just going to put all four of those back in. Then we can test the unit out after we get it all mounted. Alright, now we have that. We'll want to apply a type of video signal to it and plug in a power. Tilt the unit up. And we have picture. Another one successfully saved from um, the trash and also save a lot of money doing the repair ourselves instead of bringing it to a repair center. So now we can just lay it back down and put the rear cover back onto the unit and it'll be ready to go.